All right, Paul, we have magnetic fields now that are driving this chaotic process and this really turbulent structure on the surface of the sun, but we still don't really know where these magnetic fields come from. An important clue comes from the study of sunspots. Now, if you look at the sun, most of the time there are sunspots. I mean, you've done enough public viewing yep. days where you focus down, of course, never look at the sun directly through a That's telescope. Right. You should always project the light onto something else if you don't want to blind yourself. And it turns out the sunspots are the same regions that seem to have these strong magnetic fields. So you can see in the previous image we had the sunspots and now it's flipped to the X-ray image. So they're somehow linked. They're somehow linked. Magnetic fields in the sunspots seem deeply integrated. And it turns out that there is a... Um, the sun has a cycle. Okay. So at certain times the sun has very few sunspots and sometimes it has more. So here we've got pictures of the sun during what's called the solar minimum. So there's not a lot of activity happening, not a lot of sunspots, not a lot of then these flares. Or That's these right. So if we now flip up. to the X-ray or ultraviolet image, you can again see a solar minimum, there's not much going on. Solar maximum, there's a lot of flares and so on going on. So it's an 11-year cycle. What you can plot is... Um, this is a called butterfly diagram. What happens is the number of sunspots start off appearing a long way from the pole, near the, near the poles of the sun. Yep. And then over the 11-year cycle, they move closer and closer to the equator, but never quite reach it. Yep. And then they go away, and they start again a long way, and then move towards the middle. And, and this happens pretty regularly on the scale of about 11 years. That's right. Um, and if you look historically over a large period of time, you can see the number of sunspots. Now, the first sunspots were spotted in the early 1600s, when the first telescopes yep. were applied to the sky. And then they went away for 100 years. This is called the, the Maud de Minimum. And there was a long period when the sun didn't seem to have any activity at all. Presumably, there were no solar flares either, though yep. no one had X-ray space telescopes at the time. And then they came back with the 11-year cycle. But you can see not all cycles are the same. Sometimes yes, some are bigger and some are smaller. And... Uh, at the moment, we're just at the time of filming in 2021, we're just past the solar minimum. There are yep. very few sunspots, and we're expecting it to start ramping up over the next few years to the next maximum. And that's, you know, it's better to look at the sun when it's a maximum because there's actually stuff to see on the surface. That's right. Now, this has caused a lot of attraction for people who don't want to believe in global warming yep. because there's thought that maybe the variation in sunspots is affecting the climate on Earth. And we know that the um, when the sun's at its maximum, there's a little bit more radiation affecting the Earth. Okay. But it's, you know, of order one part in a thousand more. It's presumably all these flares, all the X-rays are bombarding the Earth. Yep. So that's not really enough to do any major difference to the Earth's climate. Yep. But people have speculated the radiation is different. It's ultraviolet, it's X-rays. It's not the normal light you get from the sun. That's true. And maybe uh, it pushes against the Earth's magnetic field and allows cosmic rays in which seed cloud formation. And so people have speculated there might be some complicated indirect mechanism whereby it's a very small amount of extra radiation somehow affects the Earth. It propagates through. Yeah. And they say, well, the, the period um, when there was um, the Maunder Minimum, when there was no sunspots, was also called the Little Ice Age in Northern Europe. It was unusually cold. So there was a slightly noticeable change of temperature around the same time they noticed not a lot of sunspots. So the current conventional wisdom is the two had nothing to do with each other, that in fact there were a bunch of volcanic eruptions that kicked dust up into the atmosphere at the time, and most likely it was the volcanic eruptions that cooled it down, not the lack of sunspots. So it was kind of a coincidence, but is there any other data we can look at to see if this was the case? Well, here's the global temperature, so you can see it starts off, um, average temperature cools down for the ice age and then rises like crazy at the moment. Yeah. Um, but if you look at more recent times, the yellow line here is showing the temperature you'd expect on the basis of how much radiation is coming in from the sun. Because yep. nowadays we have spacecraft that actually measure That's how right. much radiation is coming from the sun. And you'd see that the last few solar maxima have been a bit on the pathetic side. Yeah, there hasn't and been so a lot. So in fact, the temperature might have peaked to 30 years ago and been coming down ever since. But now it's quite clearly going up. Yeah, so this is a bit hard to explain by solar cycles because we're in a minimum at the moment, but we're also seeing very high temperatures and the temperature's climbing like crazy. And so when we, and we, even if we look at minima to minima or maxima or maxima, the difference between each is still increasing. Yeah, so it really doesn't look like this can explain why it's so warm at the moment. We have to blame human-produced carbon dioxide for that.